Hey there, Colby College. It's me, Ms. Studer, with your remote Red Fox report here on this beautiful Saturday afternoon. So I've been wandering through the forest here, following the deer trails. Um, there's no real path out here to where I'm going. And I realized, oh, yeah, you know, the deer trails aren't going the way I'm going because I saw this and I went, oh, yeah, that's what I'm looking for. So, you know, I wanted to kind of share with you a little bit about navigation out here in the woods. So the first place, I know these woods really well. And I have landmarks, and this is one of them. I just call this the big old red oak. It's all twisted and gnarly up on the top. Let's take a look. You can see it's really easy to pick out of the forest for sure. I was actually, I'll show you. I was up there on those rocks, and I said, oh, there's the gnarly oak. And I came down to it, and I thought, hey, this would be a great place to, number one, talk a little bit about navigation, and number two, correct my mistake of the red oak the other day, where I said diameter like 400 times, and I really meant circumference. And so anyway, I have come down here. I have uh, measured this already. It's 136 inches, which actually makes it a little bit bigger than that one that I was showing you. So that's going to make this, well, let's see. Let's take the circumference. So now I'm going to use my calculator for this because in all honesty, I believe this is why calculators were invented for people like me who are out in the woods and want to know the answer to something like this. So to get the diameter of a circle, well, to get the circumference of a circle, you take the diameter and multiply it by pi, 3.14. So to get the diameter, I've got to take the circumference and divide it by pi, 3.14. So the circumference of this tree was, oh, come back, 136 inches divided by 3.14 equals 43, and then this big long decimal, but I'm going to just round out to 43 because it's 43.3. So if I do 43, and now I have no idea where these growth indices come from, but there's a, I, I researched it, and there's just a lot of information about this, that instead of boring holes into trees, people like me can just make an estimate based on the diameter times the growth factor, and the diameter in inches times the growth factor. So the growth factor for this tree is 4, so 43 times 4, equals, yeah, 172. So the other one came out to 168, and this one comes out to 172 years old, which I think is about, you know, really within the same time period. But wow, what a difference, huh? That one over there is just mighty gross. High, 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 high. And this one here is just all like gnarled, and the top was taken off, and these big branches all dead on the side. You know, boy, what a difference it can be where you're placed and what you have to work with. Once again, I would say this tree also represents endurance. Because, believe it or not, this dead-looking tree is still alive. It really is. If you look way up at the top, there are buds on those branches. This tree is still alive. So... Going back to navigation, let's think a little bit about what navigation out here is like. So I have rock formations, tree formations. The tree formations can be tricky because they can really change over time. You know, someday this is probably going to fall down, but then it's going to make a, a difference to me. It's going to be a big hole here, and I'm going to be like, oh, that's where the gnarly tree used to be. Um, there's another place I'm going to bring you to. I, 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 I name places, too. I name everything out here. Nobody knows what the heck I'm talking about but me. But, like, all these places have names. Like, where we were at the top, that's the temple. This gnarly oak. That big oak tree I brought you to, that's the grand oak. You know, I just, I name every place. Porcupine Ridge, going to bring you there on another day. So the Breakfast Cliffs, going to bring you there on another day. So right now we're headed down into uh, a land that was once actually utilized quite heavily for agriculture and, um, and, ra and well, ranching, raising of small animals, particularly sheep. And I'll tell you a little bit about that later. So for now, remember, if you're going to roam the woods and follow the deer trails, you better have some landmarks 
or a compass and a map with you because they're not always going the same direction you are. Miss Ditter with your Red Fox report.